<laughs> Yuck! What is this place? Wait, what the heck is that? Red? To save yourself, Blue. She... she's coming. Who? Who's coming? <laughs> is that a new playmate I hear? Ooh, how fun. Uh, I gotta get out of here! Blue, is that you? Where are you off to in such a hurry? Green, there's no time! Follow me before! Ugh, what the? What is this junk? <laughs> you can't escape me! I'm sorry, Green! Gotta keep moving, no matter what! Supper time! <laughs> Go. Blue! Watch where you're going! No time to explain! Come with me if you want to live! What the heck are you- ah! I- I can't move! Blue! First red, then green, and now orange! The rainbow friends are being wiped out one by one! Which only leaves... Purple's gotta still be alive. He's always got an escape plan in mind. Wait. H help me! Help me! Help! Help! Ah! Purple! Wait, what? Who could have done this? Who else? Hello, Blue. Pink? Sis, you're the one responsible for all this? As if. I'm not some nobody. I'm your worst nightmare. Ugh, gross. I am not gross. Now just hold still. Uh, uh, if you're not her, then just who the heck are you? Ugh, fine. Since I'm about to eat you, I might as well tell you my story. But I warn you, it's not a happy one. This all started a long time ago. I was just your typical teenage girl in high school. My real name is Penny Pilkington. I was born with the gift of gab, meaning I like to talk a lot. Unfortunately, not everyone liked what I had to say. I only told the truth as I saw it, but some people said I needed to know when to keep my mouth shut. Penny Big Mouth doesn't like my haircut, huh? Maybe we should give her a haircut of her own. <laughs> <laughs> the girls were ruthlessly cruel. They called me names like Big Mouth, Wingbag, and Shut Up Dork. Well, that last one wasn't a name, really. Just a lot of people said it to me when I tried giving them some helpful advice. But today, I had enough. And I defended myself the only way I could. Oh, what the? Ugh, you disgusting freak! You're so gross! I had confronted my bully head on and got them to flee. However, I saw everyone else looking at me like I was the one in the wrong. I was Penny, the nasty big mouth loser. Nobody wanted to hang out with me. I was a total social outcast. I tried talking to my parents about the situation, but they were always too busy with their jobs. They thought throwing money at the problem would fix it, so I was given gifts, distractions. But all I really wanted was friends. And more than that, to be listened to. My own parents couldn't even give me that. My father even said to me once, Penny, I love you, but you just talk too much. Granted, this was after I pointed out how his beard was turning gray, but it was. Was it my fault that I was honest? Was it a bad thing? I brought my woes to the principal of the school, but she really didn't like me pointing out the mole on her nose during the discussion. She told me I needed to apologize to the ones who bullied me. I did as I was asked. It was demeaning and it wasn't right. I vowed then and there to never be silenced again. But if people in real life didn't want to hear what I had to say, then I would turn to someplace else, the internet. Around this time, I used my parents' wealth to buy some recording equipment, and I opened up an online video blog called Penny For Your Thoughts. 
It turns out on the internet, if you talk and are reasonably attractive, a lot of people are willing to listen. All I had to do was comment on the world, celebrities, media, just anything that came to mind. I even got a blue check mark next to my name. <laughs> if that isn't validation, I don't know what is. Soon enough, I got quite a following. Even some of the people who made fun of me in school started to reach out years later and apologize. Of course, in keeping with my brand, I called them out for their past bullying publicly and ruined their reputation. It was amazing. I was invited to conventions, to conferences. I even spoke to the UN. People were actually listening to me. Unfortunately, seemed the wrong person took notice. It all started small. People would stop following me here and there. A call out video would spring up. Regardless, it seems like overnight, my brand was tarnished. No one wanted to listen to me anymore. The world had moved on from my brand of sensationalism, and I was once again a total nobody. A has-been. That's when he reached out to me. A man claimed to be representing a prestigious group of influencer investors, and they wanted to put me on top again. He told me to meet him here at the Rainbow Friends Play Place. For some reason, the alarm bells never went off in my head. I just wanted my fame back, no matter the cost. When I arrived, I was immediately put off by the situation. Why was I asked to meet him here? It looked like some kid's amusement park, if you could even call it that. I told the man as much when I arrived, and he gritted his teeth and smiled. I didn't think he liked me insulting his rainbow friends. Nevertheless, he gave me the tour and said I would be working out of his streamer lab, which sounded cool enough, so I followed him. When we reached the lab, the man said that there had, quote, been a change of plans. My fight or flight response kicked in, and I spit in his face. He didn't take kindly to that. I started shouting at him, do you have any idea who I am? Who you are is gone. You're about to become something else entirely. What happened next is almost too painful to recall. My mouth which wasn't actually that big before, despite the nickname, began to stretch and expand. My skin was turning pink, and my eyes were stretching out of their sockets. I was a freak, a monster. Apparently, the man had already transformed others into monsters like me, but they were far more subservient. Well, I wasn't about to be controlled. I lunged at him. I even managed to get a good fight in. But he was planning for this. He scurried away and filled the room with knockout gas. Before I knew it, I passed out. And then awoke in a chamber deep beneath the facility. The man came to visit me and told me I was too unruly and annoying that I talked too much. He said that he couldn't let a good color like pink go to waste. So he just tried again with someone else. After he left, I slumped down in my cell, tears in my eyes. Was this to be my fate? Locked away for all eternity? No, I may be a monster, but I was also a somebody. I knew that someday I would bust out of there. I just had to bide my time. And as luck would have it, I got my chance when that other creature I heard managed to break free. <laughs> During its rampage, my own cage's electronic locks were damaged and I escaped. And the rest is history. And now I'm hunting down the man and the rest of you awful goons that serve him so willingly. Pink, I'm sorry for what happened to you, but you have to understand, none of us want to be here. Your story's not too far off from my own. Wait, you used to be human too? Yeah, we all did. Then, where's the man who turned us into monsters? Let's find him and make him pay! Pink, you already did. What? There, that settles that. Now let me help you down, friend. Red? Yes? What is it, Blue? It's... it's nothing. <laughs> 